Are you completely happy with your life right now? Do you feel like you're living the life you're supposed to live? If your answer is no, you're not alone. Many people live their days not according to their own desires, but to the wishes and expectations of others. Glennon Doyle, the author of the inspiring book Untamed, was an example of this until she decided to turn her life around. With her book, she wants to inspire others to go after what they desire and embrace their true destinies. In this video, we will provide you with a summary of the book Untamed and explore the most important lessons shared by Glennon Doyle from her own life experience. Let's get into it. Many of us design our lives to please someone else at the cost of our own aspirations. You might not even be aware of it. Perhaps you're aiming to make your parents proud, or you want to prove your teachers wrong who didn't have faith in you as a kid in school. Glennon Doyle knew what it was like to aspire to be the perfect mother, wife, Christian, and writer. Like so many of us, she'd never asked herself what she truly wanted. As a Christian mommy blogger, Glennon had a devoted fan base of millions of women. Through her blog, she gave marriage and parenting advice to others. But in reality, Doyle felt caged in her marriage with three kids. It was straining her. She was just about to release Love Warrior, a book about how she and her husband had fixed their marriage after his extramarital affairs. But that's when everything changed. How did it get to the point where Glennon felt totally captivated in her own life? While visiting the zoo with her children, she saw a magnificent cheetah. The wild animal in confinement was diminished to hunting down only a soft, stuffed animal. Because it had spent its entire life in a small cage, the cheetah had become submissive. Her wild nature had been drained from her. While observing this cheetah, Glennon recognized herself. She had tried so hard to be the perfect woman and comply with society's standards that she had completely disregarded her wild side. She hadn't always been like that. Glennon used to be a relaxed and playful kid who pursued her instinct and was never self-conscious. But by the time she was 10, she felt like she needed to conform to cultural ideas about what a good girl must look and behave like. Her constant goal was just to be good. She tried her hardest to be the perfect homemaker, mother, and Christian. This, however, caused her to lose some connection with her true self. Glennon started to become a shadow of her former self. She became depressed, anxious, and eventually bulimic. She realized that trying to pursue goodness was causing her these feelings of sadness and hopelessness. She remembered Steinbeck saying, And now that you don't have to be perfect, you can be good. She rejects both ideologies and chooses to believe a much more suiting philosophy would be, and now that we don't have to be good, we can be free. Glennon's life took a massive turn when she was at a national book conference to promote her book, and a woman unexpectedly entered the room. Glennon couldn't take her gaze away from the woman, Abby Wombach, a retired professional soccer player. Glennon didn't know what came over her, but she decided that she had to trust her instincts to get off the path that was laid out for her. Glennon decided to prioritize her own wishes and no longer wanted to be stuck in a loveless marriage. But that wasn't easy. It not only meant that she had to leave her marriage, but she also had to come out in front of millions of fans who applauded her Christian values. Glennon announced on Facebook that she and Abby had become lovers and were beginning a new family. She discussed how getting a divorce is sometimes the best way to save your family. Glennon now had to create a new life for herself, but she had no idea how. The motto, Be Still, motivated her to spend 10 minutes each day in solitude, listening to her instinct. With all these years having disregarded her desires and instinct, she needed some practice to get in touch with herself again. During these moments of silence, she challenged the core beliefs she had been taught and asked herself, do I believe this? Is it true for me? While in silence, alone with her thoughts and body, Glennon learned four major life lessons. 1. Faith How can someone be a Christian woman while also being in a relationship with another woman? This is a question Glennon asked herself after having fallen in love with Abby. Glennon found that during her moments of silence away from the chaos of the world, she was able to sink deep within herself and find answers to questions about her life through a simple nudge. And when she gave into this nudge, it became even stronger. Imagine a warm liquid gold filling your body and guiding you to all the right answers. 
Glennon believes that this feeling is God's presence that lives deep within you. This way, she redefined her relationship with God and found a whole new meaning to Christianity. 2. Moving Towards Pain Glennon had become more aware of her hurting after becoming sober. For years, she had been using alcohol to dull the pain of her caged life. When she finally confronted it, she realized that pain is the source of energy for enlightenment. We only stand up to make a change in our lives when the pain of our current situation becomes unbearable. Glennon began to move towards her pain rather than shy away from it. This enabled her to embrace her pain and discomfort and enjoy her life fully. Even though it may feel extremely uncomfortable, you should always face your pain head on. 3. Feminism and Gender Roles In the story of Adam and Eve, Eve couldn't resist the forbidden fruit and bit into the apple, which caused them to be exiled from the paradise of Eden. Glennon argues that through narratives like these, the Bible helps construct a culture built on the control of women. Instead, we should prize Eve for her appetite. In Glennon's words, maybe Eve was never meant to be our warning. Maybe she was meant to be our role model. Own your wanting. Eat the apple. Women should not be confined by society's norms and expectations, but this also goes for boys who can be caged by societal standards too. Boys are taught from an early age that real men are strong, big, and never sensitive. While young girls are still instructed that women should be beautiful, obedient, modest, and appealing to men. This is even displayed in our bath products. Take a look at your bathroom shelf. Men's products are expressive and direct, reminding young men and boys to act accordingly. Women's products, on the other hand, are covered with soft images and descriptions. All those are simply gender attributes that society has labeled. This way we are reminded every day, in subtle or more obvious ways, of how society wants us to be or act. If you become aware of this, you can actively rise against it and only comply with your own standards. 4. Institutionalized Racism Glennon became more conscious of the social inequalities afflicting her country and the whole world. She argues, in America, there are not two kinds of people, racists and non-racists. There are three kinds of people, those poisoned by racism and actively choosing to spread it, those poisoned by racism and actively trying to detox, and those poisoned by racism who deny its very existence inside them. She chooses the word poisoned because racism is embedded in society. And therefore, Glennon doesn't blame people who have racist beliefs. In fact, she admits that she was poisoned by them too. However, we should all become aware of it and actively detox from it. Glennon is now living the life of her dreams because it is one she created rather than one she has been told to live. Finally, she could stop suppressing the fire within her after rediscovering her wild, untamed heart. And now it's time for you to do so as well. You are here on this earth to live the most full, beautiful life you could imagine. So, stop and take some time to assess if your current relationships, job, and day-to-day -day life measures up to that. And if they do not, and you are courageous enough to admit they are not, you must decide if you have the guts, the right, perhaps even the duty, to actively go after your true destiny in life. One thing is certain, we all carry a wild, untamed spirit within us. It becomes imprisoned when we try to please others rather than pursue our own desires. To gain freedom, we must first begin to pay attention to our internal voice by taking moments of silence and turning inwards. Well, there you have it, guys. These are the most important takeaways from the book Untamed. Are you going to break free from society's standards and live a life that's truly meant for you? Tell us your first step to getting your dream life in the comments below. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to this channel. See you in the next video.